Well, Trump has been a broken record really since November of 2020. Everything is a conspiracy against him. He uses uh, vulgarities to vilify anybody he thinks is not going to support him. Uh, he claims that he can make the waves go back without any facts. So what we saw at Madison Square Garden is nothing new. It's just the same old, same old Trump. And I think it's really quite alarming. I think that it's important for your audience to recognize that Trump's own words condemn him as fit for office. I'm quoting exactly from Mr. Trump's proclamation on July 23rd, 2019, quote, then I have Article 2, where I have the right to do anything I want as president. He later said that he could suspend or terminate the Constitution if he decided that there were electoral fraud, not based on any evidence, but just his statement. Uh, he has refused to say that he would accept the outcome of the balloting on November 5th, despite repeated uh, requests uh, and is even his running mate saying uh, that it ought to be a peaceful transfer of presidential power. And when we look at the critics of Mr. Trump, uh, it is not just Mr. Kelly or General, retired General Kelly or my, his vice president, Mike Pence, who knows Mr. Trump a lot better than J.D. Vance will ever know him, mm -hmm. has said, I cannot vote for Mr. Trump. Well, He's Bruce, a clear and present danger. Some may say that, you know, it's the language of politics, especially during campaigns, and maybe it's not as harmful as other people think. But then let's move on to, on the other hand, where Kamala Harris has celebrities like uh, Beyonce Knowles, Taylor Swift was uh, in her campaign. What kind of influence do these celebrities bring into trying to woo and sway voters towards, you know, her campaign? I can't, I can't resist because I believe this is too long. I've been in Washington in politics a lot longer probably than most viewers have in you. The language that Mr. Trump's used is unprecedented by leaps and bounds. Even Richard Nixon at his worst Watergate moments never suggested he had the right to do anything he wanted as president. So just to say, well, he uses these words, these are the words of a dictator and he admires dictators and he stated he does, Mr. Putin, Mr. Z, Mr. Kim Jong-un of North Korea, these are not simply slips of the tongue. He even refers favorably to Adolf Hitler from time to time. These are not my words, these are communicated to his inner staff. And I reason I apologize for pausing here because uh, this could be the end. He said, well, after you vote for me, you don't have to vote ever again. Yeah, because he said on day one, his words, I'll be a dictator. Now, what about the influencers? My view is that you're dramatically overstating you know, how they change votes. Uh, by and large, at this stage, um, the records and the choice between Harris and Trump have been so stark uh, for so long, uh, the influence are not going to, in my judgment, change any votes. It's possible that they may bring out some voters who otherwise might not vote, but I don't think the American people really believe Taylor Swift has a clue about American politics and about to hit, save this country from self-ruination, due process, illegal wars, whatever. Uh, right. So I think it would be very modest, and you probably have influences on both sides cancel each other out.